Welcome. My name is Janine Grillo Mara. I serve as the chair of the Revere Human Rights Commission. March is Women's History Month, highlighting the contributions of women to events in history and contemporary society. It is celebrated during March in the United States as well as in the United Kingdom and Australia. It corresponds with International Women's Day on March 8th. For some historical context, in February of 1980, President Jimmy Carter issued the first presidential proclamation declaring the week of March 8, 1980, as National Woman's History Week. President Carter delivered the proclamation with this message. From the first settlers who came to our shores, from the first Native American families who befriended them, men and women have worked together to build this nation. Too often, the women were unsung and sometimes their contributions went unnoticed. But the achievements, leadership, courage, strength, and love of the women who built America was as vital as that of the men whose names we know so well. Over time, the law evolved through presidential and congressional action that produced the annual proclamation designating March as Women's History Month. While it's important to celebrate women all year long, this one month each year is an opportunity to recognize the sacrifices made by women for women to help make our country and the world a fairer, safer place for all. Not only is Women's History Month a time of reflection, it's also a moment to recognize how the efforts and bravery of past generations continues to pave the way for those who identify as females today. To celebrate Women's History Month, and International Women's Day, we will hear from several leaders in the community who identify as female to express what International Women's Day means to them. Hi, my name is Stacy Rizzo and I am currently a Revere School Committee and I am the Vice Chair. And today we're talking about what it does mean to what it means, at least to me, what Women's International Day is and what it's about. And when I think about International Day, it gives us an opportunity to look at all the great things that women have done for us throughout the year. Um, it gives us an opportunity to look at the accomplishments at um, whatever women have added to society and also it gives us reason to look forward and how to make it better. But then again, on the other hand, I also look at where we are um, with the Me Too and the Not Surprise movement and how much more we have to go um, from gender equality. We are still suffering from women's violence and women's equality. So there is so much more to do, um, but at least we can look at this month um, as a positive and then go forward and start changing the tool to fight on how to make this a more positive world for women in general and for the future of our children. So I, I believe the next question might be, what are the benefits to having women in leadership? And I'm, I'm sure it varies from person to person or gender to gender. Um, but I have to think of, we bring a fresh perspective to diversity. Um, the experience, the viewpoints, we play a significant role in fostering um, innovative ideas and perspectives. I also look at it as more empathetic leaders. And I don't mean emotionally, although, you know, I can honestly say I'm proud of my emotions and if they come forward, that's fine by me. It's me. Um, instead of using 
you know, I look at empathetic instead of using authoritative leadership. It just has more value and you're being open-minded and understanding to diverse points of view. Um, and then I would also say we are more understanding. Um, strong will, but more understanding. We are cognizant of everyone's feelings, men, women, no matter what the race is, no matter what the age is, we're just that much better to be positive. Um, and to me, those are the positive things about being a leader in um, today's world. I value so many of the people I've seen growing up and um, learn from so many people and so many women. And I'm just proud to be a woman right now, at, especially in 2023. I am so proud. I've never been a feminist, but I've always been um, myself and enjoyed each part of my life as I saw fit and brought my own values growing up and instilled in my children. And it's just a great time to be a woman. I'm Aisha Milbury Ellis and I'm a member of your school committee. International Women's Day to me is a time of reflection. It's a time of remembrance and it's a time for us to pay homage to the hundreds of thousands of women that have come before us. When this country was started, women were considered property rights. We had to fight in order to get the right to vote, in order to keep our own wages. Um, when we continue to fight, we've had to, just recently, within the last decade, um, we've had to fight in order to engage in active combat. So slowly but surely, we are gaining all sorts of um, equal rights. And this experience that we now have has come at a cost. And so International Women's Day is a time for us to think about that. It's a time for us to educate our kids, uh, especially our, our young girls. It's important that they know this. I'm sure there are many facts about um, the struggle of, of women in this country and where we've come from that they don't know. So it's a time for us to, um, to have gratitude and it, is, um, a, it causes a spark in me to wanna do better and to wanna continue to pave the path for our young girls. As far as how I maintain a balance of my um, professional life, my career and passions, um, you know, you have time for what you want to have time for. So as a practical matter, I tend to pick and choose um, my priorities and where I can be at all times. And I try to, to do what's best at that moment. Um, thank you. Hello, my name is Carol Tai. I am currently a member of the Revere School Committee. And I think International Women's Day is a wonderful observance, partly because I think we get to set a good example to the young women who are following behind us, partly because we learn to uh, look at women who have led successfully and uh, with heart, maybe, rather than heart and mind. And I think that's a good time for us to associate all of that with our younger folks. So uh, it, it's a nice remembrance. It's a nice marking point um, for all of us to learn that we have to join together and help each other out. You have to reach down, pull your hand up, and hope that you help someone behind you. Okay, what motivated you to set up? To that, if that was too that rambling, I could do it over again. Um, as I said, I'm now, current, I'm now a member of the school committee. I started out um, as a teacher of English and Latin at Revere High School well over 60 years ago. I went in, I always loved going to school, I always loved being in school. I am not a Revere High graduate. I graduated from parochial school, but all my friends went to Revere High and I was a little jealous because they had a lot more people there and there were a lot more activities and there were a lot more um, a, uh, opportunities for leadership. So shortly, uh, one year, maybe a year and a half after I became a teacher, uh, the current teachers group, Teachers Association, kind of fell apart because people were getting older and besides 
most of the younger teachers who were coming in, many of us were not satisfied with just a, a social uh, union. We wanted much more of an active union. And especially, I'd say that we were very upset that when the raises came, they went to all of the administrators and none of the teachers. And we, a group of us, a small group of us, decided we have to do something about this. So in my third year as a teacher, before I even had tenure, I was voted in as president of the Revere Teachers Association. Served in either that capacity uh, or maybe as a head of the Teachers Negotiating Committee. I wrote the first contract we had. Um, I served in that capacity for the rest of my 35 years as a teacher at Revere High School. Then, by chance, I'm not quite sure how it happened, I became the assistant superintendent of schools. Mostly the way it happened was that I had institutional knowledge. And um, I remember saying to the superintendent then, uh, look, I'll do this for one year, but I want to go back and teach English and Latin afterwards. And he said, well, we're not going to have Latin anymore, but you, <laughs> you, can, have, you can go back and teach English. Except, of course, he left. And when he left, he said to me, you should apply for the job. So I did. And luckily, people put their faith in me. I uh, served out my contract and for six years. And then after that, uh, I decided, well, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll run for school committee because I know how much a superintendent and the teachers need support from someone on the school committee who understands what's really going on. And I've been doing that ever since. So in my, uh, in my well over 60 years here, I've done a, uh, been in a lot of different positions and I have found all of them rewarding, all of them frustrating at times. Um, and it's taught me to be a good listener um, and understand, given me an understanding of what people need. But they, they often don't say what they really need. They need, sometimes they need other things too. And uh, let me get back to world for women's leadership. Uh, I think that, uh, that the leadership day is a good chance for us to look and at ourselves and to say, what did I learn in every position I was in? What do I hope to learn as my life goes on? And how can women, well, how can women leaders teach me, even at my age, and how can I teach them uh, with an interchange of respect? And uh, we don't always fit in the old boys world. So I think we really need to learn to help each other out and to work together to accomplish what we need because there are generations following us and I hope they I hope they really do have a, have a much easier time <laughs> than we have had and uh, that's still part of my mission so hi my name is Diane Kelly and I am the superintendent of schools here in Revere Massachusetts and I'm happy to be here with uh, my colleague uh, Danielle Mokaba um, to talk a little bit about International Women's Day and what it means to us. Yes. Um, I think uh, one of the important things in, is thinking about young women and thinking about the future. Um, I think about how we weren't celebrating International Women's Day when I was growing up as a child, um, and it's something that uh, girls today are fortunate to uh, be able to see that it is important and that women across the world are celebrating um, empowering young girls uh, to um, be uh, be brave and be courageous mm -hmm. and take the risks um, to make a change. Yeah, and I, I just, I think you um, are exactly right that it's about the young girls and them seeing opportunity in places that we maybe didn't see when we were kids. Mm -hmm. um, I. I don't even think I knew what a superintendent was then. Um, and most of the principals that I had uh, in my own K-12 experience or assistant principals or others in leadership positions in the schools were men. And the same was true for like school committee members, mayors, elected officials. It was primarily men. And we still see um, 
that those positions are male dominated, but we definitely see more women uh, engaging and more women um, taking on those kinds of leadership positions. And I think that's really important because men are terrific leaders. Most of them are great leaders. And um, I've benefited from the guidance of a lot of fantastic male leaders in my uh, lifetime. And I think that's incredible. But I do think the perspective is a little bit different on what women need and how to meet women's needs when there are women engaged in the conversation. Um, and that's what excites me about International Women's Day is that it really highlights the need for women to have a voice and be present at the table uh, in these decision-making opportunities. Mm -hmm. I think I, I was fortunate if I think about my, uh, the leaders that I saw um, whether it was uh, a very strong classroom teacher that made a difference in my life, or uh, when I was younger, we had a, a female uh, athletic director. Mm. Um, and as an uh, athlete, um, a woman athlete, and as uh, someone who thought about uh, teaching early on in my life, I was fortunate to have those sort of um, mentors. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, when I came to Revere, 25 years ago thinking about um, what motivated me um, there were so many amazing uh, women that I worked with um, and that were young teachers uh, and were uh, leaders um, I think about uh, Carol Ty I think about Linda Pinocchio and I think mm -hmm. about um, the people that saw me as a young teacher um, and supported me um, Dr. Kelly uh, and uh, Dr. Kelly Chase um, mm. were also uh, two others that said, you know, uh, there's a lot more than just teaching. You can make a difference. Mm. Um, and so I think about that mentorship and people saying, you know what, you if you want to coach, go coach. If And I remember Carol Ty said that. Um, if you want to go into administration, go. Mm. Do it. Get your doctorate. And I feel yeah. like that sort of push to by other um, women was uh, it was it was it is the reason why I'm in the position that I'm in today um, that I had that support. Yeah, and I'll say I'll echo that. I, the women you named were great. Um, I'll add Carol Haney was oh, another yes. uh, yeah. female administrator who was a great guide, and um, Anne Marie Costa, mm -hmm. um, and that was definitely very helpful. Um, and I, I'll echo again that, you know, the Paul Dakins, the Jim Barneses, the Scott Lumsdens, those folks certainly saw women as people who could play leadership roles mm -hmm. in the school department and definitely invited us to take that next step. And I'm thankful to all of them as well. Yeah. Um, I think about when we started mm -hmm. uh, over eight years ago. Um, and walking into the first uh, Mass Association of School Superintendents convening and looking around the room thinking, uh, I don't see a lot of women in this room. Yeah. Um, and I certainly didn't see a lot of people of color mm -hmm. in the room either. Um, I, I guess in your role as Mass President, how do you think about um, who's missing? Um, yeah. in these roles. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like the conversations we have, and I'll say, you know, the work with MASS, but also the work that we do with the Urban Superintendents Network, mm -hmm. um, we are starting to see more diversity, both um, in gender and in race, in those groups. And it just, honestly, it makes the conversation so much richer. Mm -hmm. And we're able to talk at a different level about what our students need and how we can help them mm -hmm. achieve success academically. Um, and when you have a lot of different perspectives contributing to that conversation, it's going to be a richer discussion and you're more likely to find ways to help all kids and not just certain kids be successful. Mm -hmm. And I think too, one of the things that uh, is a focus is the self-reflection mm -hmm. um, in our meetings and in the work that we're doing here uh, with the Equity Advisory Board and our focus on um, equity is thinking about how do I, as a white woman, what do I, what bias do I bring to the table, and how do I uh, engage others and really listen to uh, 
others and their perspective and listen to um, our leaders of color and listen to the superintendents of color that we talk to and make sure that I'm understanding what I'm I might be missing in, mm. in really hearing the things that they're experiencing and that they think they need as leaders or they need as teachers or that we can make sure our students have. Hi, my name is Claudia Curie. I am the Chief of Talent and Culture for the City of Riviere. International Women's Day for me means that is that day where we get together to celebrate all the efforts and the contributions that we make to society. Actually, International Women's Day should be every day because every day we're making contributions. Every day we're putting ourselves out there to make sure that our families, that, that our future and our communities are aiming for equity and to make sure that we're also fighting for social justice, making sure that academic goals are reached. So for me, it's definitely huge as, as a mother of a four-year-old girl uh, Women, Women's International Day is something where I'll make her aware of the things that she needs to do. And, you know, it's it's sad to say, but obviously to fight. And, and that's what it means. And this is the perfect day to celebrate, celebrate all of us. And what advice would you give to the next generation of female leaders? Definitely don't be afraid. Have courage. Fight for equity. Uh, one thing I always tell people, you know, in my role as my previous role as a human resources director is it's okay. It's okay to fight for equal pay, for equal benefits. It's totally fine to say, hey, I deserve more. You know, it's, I've seen applications, I've seen people and women and men, sadly, they don't, they don't tend to negotiate at the same level uh, when it comes to, for example, uh, negotiating salaries. Um, women, unfortunately, we have not been taught that it's okay, that we deserve a good pay, that we deserve an equal place at the table, that we should be invited to the decision-making conversations. So to the new generation, don't be afraid, you know, just, just take your place at the decision-making table. Hi, my name is attorney Molly McGee. I am a criminal defense and immigration attorney in the city of Revere. Um, International Women's Day means to me the celebration of past and present female leaders and all women um, in all their roles throughout society in every country all over the globe. Some uh, inspiring leaders in my lifetime have definitely been uh, Justice of the Supreme Court Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was the second woman to serve on the Supreme Court, was the first Jewish woman, and was a career advocate for women as well as gender equality. Michelle Obama was the first black first lady of the United States, and she was also an attorney, an attorney and an author. She used her platform um, to also advocate for um, people marginalized throughout the United States, specifically young women and girls. Billie Jean King was a leader in women's tennis. I'm not a tennis player, but she um, advocated for the passage of Title IX which prohibits sex discrimination in federally funded school programs, basically ensuring that um, and trying to work for equality in women's sports. Um, sports helped me be um, a leader in my community, be a leader as an attorney, and um, I think it's great for everyone, especially young women and girls. Hi, my name is Kuru Pech. I am a CEO at Harbor Cove, the community overcoming violence. Um, International Women's Day. International Women's Day is a day in honor of the women we came from, our mothers, our ancestors. The women beside us, our sisters, our friends who were girls with us before and women with us now. It is a day of celebration of womanhood and motherhood and it experiences, including those experience it and may not identify with the label now. And yeah, it is important to balance our lives um, personally and professionally and keep the passion going 
for me, I always um, build a connection. It's important to make sure that I'm connected with people um, mentally, um, spiritually, and also physically. What I mean by that is that I, for my pro professional um, support, I connect with people locally, nationally, and internationally. Um, for my personal life, I um, spiritually connecting to a higher level and I do a lot of meditation and physically I go dancing, um, gardening, painting, cooking, um, and also um, I gather um, connecting with friends and family because that is important. Um, and for mental health from time to time, it's important for us to make sure we, we take care of our mental health, especially me and um, I might see a therapist um, on and off for support. And I always encourage everyone to do so for our own health mentally and physically. Good morning, my name is Jennifer Lambolita. I'm the director of the Multilingual Learner and World Language Department for Revere Public Schools. So to me, International Women's Day is about celebrating the accomplishments of women worldwide, about promoting equality for all women, and in the school and leadership roles, ensuring that we have diverse representation of women in all fields and all roles. Um, some advice that I might have for others for other women thinking about leadership role is to really not limit yourself. I think as women, we put the barriers on ourselves. I was um, a classroom teacher and I saw a leadership role position and it was really my husband and some colleagues and friends that when I read the description, they said, you can do those things, even though I had never done some of them before. And I was limiting myself and, and thinking that oh, I'm not ready for this, or I'm not able to do this. Everyone can learn, everyone can grow into a leadership position. So if it's not yourself, then it's finding that trusted colleague or that other voice that really pushes you forward. Because when I got that leadership role, and then I've moved into other since, we, we see that we have the, the capacity to do it. And sometimes I think as women, we might limit ourselves. So when you see that job description, or you're hearing about an opportunity, don't think you have to have 100% of those qualities or those experiences. Think for 50% and then think, how am I going to learn and grow into the rest of it? So I really encourage everyone, find mentors, find another strong woman to talk to, um, and don't limit yourself. Good morning. So my name is Christina Porter and I am the Director of Humanities for Revere. Um, so the first question here is, what does International Women's Day mean to me? So I am passionate about equity um, in our schools, in my leadership, and actually on the International Women's Day website, they had a great quote that I really love, uh, true inclusion and belonging require equitable action. So I just think it's not enough to support women. So for example, like hiring women into leadership roles, but we also need to support and lift each other. Um, I had that done for me. I'm a mentor to a couple of new administrators, uh, female administrators in the district. So that's really important to me. But equity, it's not enough to just say we're equitable. Our actions have to match our, our words. Um, and the second question, two women that inspire me. This is easy because there are so many women that inspire me. Uh, the first person I want to call it is Dr. Kelly. So Dr. Kelly was actually, I'm smiling, was my math teacher here at Revere High School. I was sort of a pain in the neck in math um, as a student. She never ever gave up on me. I used to say ridiculous things like, you know, help the children who can do algebra and leave me alone. And she never left me alone. Um, she was always, you know, telling me like, you can do this, you're smart enough. And that, that has stuck with me, you know, 20 plus years later. Um, I think she's a tremendous leader for this district. You know, she's uh, one of the few long-standing superintendents in the state. She just received that award that she's too humble to even mention. So I really respect and admire her. I always have. 
Um, the other leader I want to call out who I really respect and admire is Joanne Millette, who's the principal at Susan B. Anthony. I, I literally don't know how she does it. She's everywhere all the time. You know, directors can be, you know, always pushing principals to be part of different work that we're doing. And she is always there. She shows up. She's there for the teachers. She's a leader on the ground. She knows what's going on in her school. I honestly don't think that she even sleeps, um, but I really respect and admire her hard work, her passion, and her dedication. My name is Brianna Supes. I am the Assistant Curriculum Director for K-12, as well as the Title I Director. Um, what does International Women's Day to mean to me? International Women's Day is uh, a time to celebrate and bring attention to all the amazing social, economic, and cultural achievements um, that women have made over the years. And um, when I think of a female leader that has made an impact of, in, on my life, I think of Dr. Christina Porter um, here in our curriculum department. I have had the pleasure of working underneath her and um, really learning uh, the ropes from her and um, having the opportunity to experience her leadership style, which I feel uh, some, of the, some of those uh, qualities are you know just that level of compassion and level of understanding and just that ability to listen and understand um, and then working to solve problems. Hi, I'm Melissa Lomas. I'm the principal over at the Hill School uh, with Revere Public Schools. Um, and the first question uh, was, what does International Women's Day mean to me? Um, and I would think that on um, International Women's Day, I think predominantly about women who have not had the same opportunities in life that I have. Um, I grew up in a place where I was encouraged to do whatever I wanted to be. Um, my parents supported me in going to college to get an art degree uh, in theater, uh, which they knew I probably would never use, but I, I got it anyway. Um, and then I, it encouraged me to go into a field um, at the airport working for my dad that probably I wouldn't have done in any other situation. And I worked with people from all over the world. Um, so I think about the women who have not had the same type of opportunities that I have had. Um, and my responsibility in creating uh, opportunities for people, um, not just women, um, but for all kinds of people in the world. And I think that that leads directly into uh, your second question, which was about being um, how do I'm how I'm mindful about who is at the table and who is not at the table and and having been um, having been a gender minority in a very male dominated uh, industry, aka the airport, um, I can say that I try really hard, especially in um, education, to consider uh, the dads in the equations to uh, take into account that. You know, our first call shouldn't be to the mom. Um, it should always be to whatever the, the family home number is listed as. Um, but I think that really being mindful of the people who are not traditional, uh, traditionally seen as being highly involved in children's education, especially elementary education. Um, I think predominantly in our society, we see the caretaking of children to be a women's job. And, and I would argue that um, that might be one of the flaws of our society. Uh, is that we put all of these burdens on women to, you know, take care of the domestic pieces of the home, raise the children, but then also have a job and support the family outside of the home. Um, I think it's a lot to ask of, of one person in a family. Um, so those are the people that I think about when we're meeting or we're talking or we're making decisions, uh, you know, who who is missing and where does that person um, have a place at our table? Uh, hello, my name is uh, Dr. Stacey Mulligan. I'm the principal over at City Lab Innovation High School. Um, one of the questions uh, that I was asked was, uh, what motivated you to step up and become a leader um, in our organization at Revere Public Schools? Um, this was actually a pretty big decision for me. Um, I had been an assistant principal for um, three years, and I really didn't have the faith in myself that I could actually do this position and I'm thankful to other women who convinced me over and over, like, you can do the job. Um, don't be afraid to take a leap of faith. Um, you have all the skills that you need um, and the drive to actually do this job and do it well. Um, I'm thankful that there is a almost like a secret society of women that do that for other women um, when we need it. Um, I try to 
model that every day when I see other women in my school that I see leadership potential in and they may not see it in themselves. I make sure to encourage them to get into leadership programs, um, take the lead on private hair at school um, and see things that they may not see in themselves. Um, so I think we need each other to do that. And I think that's a real message during International uh, Women's Month to for women to encourage other women um, that may not have that not, not drive, but may not have the confidence to step up to encourage other women when you see that there's a spark that could really make a change to encourage them to take that leap of faith and go forward. Hi, I'm Caitlin Riley. I am the deputy principal at Revere High School. I identify as a woman leader here at, the, here at our school. Um, I see International Women's Day as a day to celebrate the contributions of women um, in, in our society in many different forms. Um, I also think that it's a day to just raise awareness of the work of women and of the places, um, the sort of systemic ways in which um, women don't necessarily uh, or experience inequities in relation to men, for example, uh, for jobs that have um, sort of gaps in pay, um, for ways in which um, Women are sort of fighting for, um, you know, access to um, to healthcare needs. Um, so it's a day to sort of honor and um, support women. Um, I sort of feel proud of being a female leader. Um, I think one of the powerful things is getting to be a role model. I think in in every um, job, I hope that there are people of all sorts of different backgrounds, so that younger people can see themselves as. Um, capable and possible of achieving that as well. So um, I hope for um, those who in our school who identify as female to see that they themselves can be uh, um, a really impactful woman teacher, woman leader. Um, I also think that um, being female is one element of diversity. Um, there are many, you know, it, across different types of diversity, whether that's um, economic, racial, ethnic, gender, um, having people of different backgrounds brings different perspectives. So um, I think there are ways in which I can bring a perspective to a leadership team that relate to um, my identity uh, and that that is true in, in different realms of leadership, that when you have voices at the table um, on behalf of different backgrounds, then you have a broader perspective of what's going to be best. So I hope that I'm able to bring that to the school community um, from the lens that I hold myself. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lena Marie Rockwood and I'm an assistant principal at Rivera High School. And International Women's Day to me means a day to recognize all the accomplishments that women have made over several years. Um, and the look towards the future of seeing how we advocate for student voice and the strong female voices that are in the high school now and how they can shape the future and have even more impact on society. Um, the advice I would give to the next generation of female leaders is to be yourself, um, believe in what you think for ideas because new innovations are happening all the time and we could have the next future leader of our country sitting right before us. Hi, my name is Rachel Shanley. I am one of the assistant principals over at the Whalen Elementary School. I am delighted to share with you some thoughts that I have about International Women's Day, which is coming up and very exciting. Um, first, I would like to share a quote that resonates with me. Author is unknown. When you get to where you're going, turn around and help her too. For there was a time not long ago when she was you. So that really resonates with me. I feel like Women's um, Day really is a time when we have to look back and re reflect and have gratitude for women that came before us and kind of paved the way um, and think about all the work that we still have to do. I know this year's theme is embrace equity, um, which is so important. And I feel like everything we do, we need to have equity on our mind um, and make the world a more inclusive place for all. One thing about that quote I, that I really love is that it really makes us sit back and reflect on where we started. Um, being a school leader in the district, I did not start out as a school leader. 
I started out as a 21 year old young girl out of college um, who kind of thought I knew everything and realized very quickly I did not. So being able to reflect and think back on the journey has been a really helpful way for me to know what areas I still have to grow with in my leadership. Um, some of the factors that have impacted my leadership as a female have been my three core values, which I hold so close to my heart, and they are courage, connections, and collaboration. I think leading with coverage is leading with courage is one of the most important things to do as a leader, especially as a female leader. Um, making connections with colleagues, with students, with families and caregivers is vital to our work every day. And collaborating with educators, with staff members, with family members, and letting students know that you're an ally, you're by their side, you're there to help out, um, has been a really important part of my work in making some positive changes. Um, I am, my name is Michelle Irvin. I am um, a teacher at the high school. I'm the lead teacher of the ELL department, um, and I'm also the union um, co-president. And um, what does International Women's Day to mean to mean? It's an interesting story because um, up until I started teaching immigrants, I had no idea what International Women's Day is because we just don't celebrate it in this country uh, until recently. Um, so I really like that we're actually like recognizing women um, and um, and there are more women now in leadership positions than, than ever before. I mean, we do have a vice president that is now a woman. Um, so what is some benefits of having a woman in leadership? I think, you know, when I saw the vice president getting um, elected, you know, the first woman vice president, even like the first woman secretary, you know, all of, uh, secretary of state, all of those, it's just, it's very nice to see someone who looks like you, someone, and to see that you can do it, that, um, you know, women have a place and we have a place in leadership and we have a place in society. And uh, um, so that's what it, it means to me. Hi, I'm Major Bowker. I'm the uh, senior army instructor for the Army Junior ROTC program here at Revere High School. And what Women's International Women's Day means to me is focusing on gender equality um, specifically as a female officer who served in the military for over 20 years um, and representing only 13% of the actual force is uh, made up of women. Um, so that's what I, that's why it's important to me. Um, and in terms of becoming a leader, uh, what made me step up to become a leader? Um, this started with when I graduated from high school and knew I wanted to join the military and chose the path to become an officer and from a very young age just held leadership positions throughout my career and as after I retired from the military I um, decided to give back to my community and became a JROTC instructor. She's a dreamer, she's a believer, she's a doer, she's an achiever and that she is you. To all the strong, intelligent, talented and simple wonderful woman in the world. Never forget how much you were loved and appreciated. On, On behalf, behalf of the students of the, students of the Revere, Revere Public Schools, Schools we, we want, want to wish you a happy Women's International Day. Women's Day. <laughs> As we close our tribute to Women's History Month and International Women's Day, I offer my heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to those who identify as women and participated to share their experience and wisdom, as well as all those involved in this production. May more and more women emerge into leadership roles to help guide this world in need of care. Thank you to Revere TV and thank you for all who watched.